James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is August 2nd, 2023, 11 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. So far today, we've had three M flares. Now we know the first two originated from the same old sunspot, AR-3380. We're going to take a look together at the third flare that's just occurred and see how large it was and where it originated. The first M flare originated at 8.03 UTC time, which of course would be about 1.03 in the morning central time here. It was an M1.3. That was followed by a second M flare here, an M1.2 that originated at about 10.45 UTC time, or about 3.45 a.m. Central Time in the morning. We also have just had another M flare here, as you can see. And it looks to be a little bit stronger. It looks to be about a 1.7 magnitude M-class solar flare. Looks like it occurred right at about 2.50 UTC time. That one is not listed yet, but we'll be able to see, hopefully, more than one of these. Let's take a look. Starting out with GOES Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. We look immediately to AR3380, and I believe that we do, in fact, see that M flare pop off right there. This does go right through 1540, which would be right about now. And it looks like it does pop off at that time. So all three M flares originated from sunspot AR3380. Although we have lots of other active sunspots on the solar disk, only AR3380 is complex. It is beta gamma, not beta delta gamma, but fairly complex. These sunspots appear to become more complex as they turn towards the western limb and are facing the gas giants. So we can expect several of these other sunspots to become more complex and start to flare. I wouldn't be surprised at all if AR3380 expelled an X flare once directly facing the gas giants here. Now, I want everyone to know that NASA NOAA says that we were not hit by coronal mass ejection, although we saw the huge leap in plasma that went up to over 25 centimeters cubed. And we all know that that was a direct hit that lasted about four and a half hours on our Discover satellite yesterday. I, for one, was perplexed with the temperature and why it did not move with the plasma for the first time ever. Over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center, we can see some of these X flares here. This is the 8 o'clock X flare that we talked about. And this is the 1050 X flare that we talked about. And I'm guessing we're going to actually be able to see the last one that's not been reported yet, the stronger one. And there it is, right there. It's going to be over mostly the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean, and the very, well, northern part, Venezuela, perhaps, of South America. And that was the last activity, although we are running a C2 baseline. A C flare used to be newsworthy. Taking a look at the sunspots, this was just taken you can see 3380 over here becoming very complex as it faces the gas giants on our western limb. I know that looks like our eastern limb, but actually they flipped the image here. Then we have 3384, 3386. It looks like it's becoming complex. And we have lots of trailing sunspots, 3387, 3393, 3389, 338. 88, 3390, 3392, and 3391. Additional sunspots are coming around the limb and should be named shortly. 
Wow. With that said, AR3388 has been one of the most active sunspots that I remember seeing in some time. Luckily, it hasn't blown a huge solar flare towards Earth. We've had 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe even 11 M flares generated while AR3380 was Earth facing. Again, just between yesterday and today, we've had that many. I believe you can add four to that number and get up closer to 15 or 16 M flares while AR3380 has been Earth facing. And remember, it was never complex until yesterday, and it's still not very complex as far as its electromagnetic complexity. God bless you guys. Share, subscribe, and always remember anything's possible in Bizarro World.